Hey guys, Gary Reid from Showtime here and our first project car for 2023 to add to the Repco fleet is this awesome 350 Chev powered 1975 FJ40 Shorty. We went down the summer ads, we saw this on a trade site, we could not resist it. Bumped into the owner, name's George, bought it off him, uh, did a bit of haggling, he'd already had it sold but it fell through and by Saturday afternoon we'd bought it. We hadn't driven it, we hadn't started it, hadn't sat in it. Come Sunday afternoon, the trader hall closed at three, we were in it, turned the key, first kick it started and we cruised out of the summer nets, did a lap straight on the transporter, headed home here to the Gold Coast with this awesome FJ40. Check it out, thanks to the guys at GME. Obviously you need a two-way. This is one of the top of the line ones, hidden under the dash. We're gonna rem remote mount the handpiece so we can just have that in the dash. We're gonna do full cast custom dash on this car, modern switch blocks and a whole bunch of other stuff. This is something I've always wanted. Massive, big, chunky aerial. Now, I wanted the 2.41 to make it look like an RC car, but the boys taught me into this one. 1200 mil, it'll be custom mounted on the back. Little bit of fab work to be done there. Run the winch is going on the front. You've got to have a winch. Big, chunky one on the front. This is unbelievable. Plenty of pulling power. We're going to make a custom bar. And then these guys, Steady Lights, have hooked us up and this is gonna be absolutely awesome. We're gonna have some little rock crawler lights on the side, like, like little fog lights in the custom bar. But most importantly, we're gonna make a light bar here. Now, I didn't wanna go the modern light bar because I wanted to keep the old school sort of retro look, but kind of modern. So we've gone with these awesome pro quads and these little fog lights on the side. So we're gonna mount about five of these, two of these. We're gonna make a custom light bar on the top of this car, which is gonna look Unreal, light up plenty. We've got a few little highlight lights to go underneath the rock crawler lights as well. But one of the coolest things on the inside, we're gonna take the fuel tank out. We've got to remount the fuel tank. We're gonna get a fuel cell for the back so we can lower the seats. We're gonna retrim the seats, get the driving position a bit better. Retro steering wheel. We're gonna, as I said, make a custom dash. We're gonna remove this bar and we're thinking of putting a lightweight binomy top that can be on and off. That's to help with transporting this vehicle around. Obviously the height, the windscreen folds down, so in the transport it's a lot better. But one thing that is really gonna set this off is these. Thanks to the guys at KMC, we've got these bad boys. Big set of 18s with 33 inch fuel tires. We tried 30, well we tried 35s, we had 37s and we had 33s. The 35 inch tires on the front look kind of cool. Put them on the back, we would have had to do a lot of mod work under the car and we didn't want to lift the car. We think it's a cool height as it is and 33s work front and rear perfect. So these are going on and this is our new highlight colour. We're calling it KMC bronze. So we're going to paint the dash, the, the winch mount, the front end, the grill, the light bar mount will all be in the KMC bronze. Little bit of sign writing on this to just to identify it as we might go a little bit of Desert Racer, Repco Showtime Racing Team logos on the side and um, it is gonna be off its head when it's finished and a ton of fun to drive. So what I'm thinking is, if you stand back there, get the light bar, and I'm thinking five of these, and then one of those. So guys, we've made the trek up the highway, and we are here at Atomic Customs to see Camo and the crew that's doing all the fab work we talked about on the Land Cruiser. Longest run, we've driven it actually, straight up the, uh, the highway of the M1, Gold Coast, halfway up to Brisbane, and the thing ran an absolute treat. Looked cool on the road, and plenty of people giving the thumbs up which means we're off to a good start because we haven't touched it yet and it already is starting to appeal to people. So out here at Atomic Customs, we're gonna run through what we're doing with Camo and his team and then they're gonna get into it and uh, do the spotlight bar, take the uh, seats out, 
remounted fuel tank, new fuel cell, lower the seats, change the pedal position a little bit, raise the steering column, and then the fun stuff, the mounting of the winch, light bars and everything else. So a little custom bracket for the UHF aerial and some fun stuff. So uh, stay tuned. Yeah, look how thick it, yes. Look at that already. So all that can go. All that shit in your hand can go. Yeah. So when it came to the interior of the FJ40, the seats obviously are a highlight. It's very, very plain inside the car. It's just the seats and the fuel cell and the steering wheel. I sent Sam around to the guys at Trim Effects, Chris and his team always nail everything they do for us. So uh, Sam picked the colour. He nailed the colour. It was uh, a mix of KMC bronze and the original Land Cruiser colour. He was gone for about four hours and uh, told me he was getting the job done, but uh, not too sure how much work he did because his mouth's moving a lot, he's making some noise, but the sewing machine needle is not going up and down. So Sam, get back to the office. All right, guys, here we are. Quick assembly. We are racing to get to the KMC uh, trade night tonight with our new FJ. It's in the background there. It's coming along. We're up here with Camo and the team at Atomic Customs. Now, one problem we realized, we got a massive set of KMC wheels running 33-inch tires, and the issue was the spare wheel carrier didn't carry them. So, obviously, a lot wider wheel was hitting the frame here. So, a bit of ingenuity from Camo and we stole a Toyota hub off a project out the back in the yard and we've actually made an adapter plate welded the Toyota hub for the new spare wheel which is this massive KMC wheel that's about to go on so a little bit of improvisation here for about an hour out and this thing still has to have the wheels put on it and the stickers put on it to go to the open day that's stage one and then straight back here on Sunday to do stage two, which will include the light bar, uh, the wiring of the winch, the front end's turned out absolutely awesome, as you can see here. Steady lights, the run for winch, custom made bar. And we've got some steady headlights to go in there as well. So we are racing to get this thing done and the KMC is about to go on and we're out to work out whether our new factory Toyota wheel adapter is working boom we're on the way to pick up the fj40 camo's finished it um we're pumped messages late last night with some update videos and i can't wait to see it it's going to be sick and uh davo's going to drive it back down the freeway do you yeah. know what what? I'm freaking excited. Freaking excited, see? That's what we do here. Bring excitement. <laughs> Look at the steady light bar. The first thing you see when you walk in. <laughs> That's what all the late nights are for. That is sick. And the last minute addition why Camo is so tired is this bad boy. Just waiting on a couple of tow hooks and look at this. You think it's gonna be a problem to unhook this, but not when you got this bad boy. Little bit of scalloping in the steel rear bar. Tank is in. This is factory looking, look at that. Well boys, that's how you make a light bar. And if you're wondering what this little bar is, this little bar is so we can still fold the windscreen down and it sits on here and hooks on to these little ties that Camo fabricated as well, which is awesome. Because we gotta load it down if we have to load it on the transporter because it's to get it nice and low. So, unreal. So why did we choose a Land Cruiser? 
Simple. Toyota, Land Cruiser, two iconic names when it comes to Australian automotive. And a 1975 one happens to be the same age as me. So I thought, what better place to start? And we happened to find this Land Cruiser. It was already restored, painted, was all done underneath, and it already had a 350 Chev in it. So we met a guy called George. We came across it at the Summer Nats. We did a deal on the Friday night. Didn't drive it, didn't start it, didn't even sit in it. Trusted George. Sunday afternoon, got in the thing, drove it straight out of the trader hall, did a lap of the summon apps and straight on the transporter to head back to the Gold Coast workshop. And the thing was an absolute treat, but we wanted to put obviously our custom garage Repco look and feel to it. So the key was the wheels and tyres at the start. Uh, we were lucky enough to have the guys from KMC Wheels and wheel pros down at the summer at so we were straight over there on sunday morning we'd already picked a set of wheels for it. it's running 33 inch tires which you have to have if you want to look cool and be serious and that's what we got on it and then it was like what else can we put on this so the front end needed a custom bar so we wanted to make a custom bar we wanted light to it all importantly we wanted a winch every four wheel drive needs a winch so we went for the runva 13 xp winch you know it's a great Great looking winch. I mean, all in all for us, it's always about looking good, but it's also about functionality. Uh, you know, we are going to use the winch and we wanted a good one. So these winches, Runver winches from, you know, the, the smaller one to the full scale, largest one they make are absolutely awesome product. And then the lights on the front bar, we started with the steady lights, recess lights. We made the bar around the lights and the D shackles and the hooks on the front to give it the look, but also be practical. And then it led to the light bar. Now, I'm a fan of light bars on late model cars, but when it comes to early model cars, I feel you need spotlights. So the challenge for us, we wanted to make a spotlight bar. So a lot of work with uh, our fabricator Kamikaze at Atomic Custom Fab to make a bar that molded into the top of the windscreen. All the wires went behind it. They're all hidden. They all run down the inside of the windscreen channel and we've got a mixture of the big quad spots up there the rectangle spotlights you know the, the little uh, smiley face logo which we absolutely love and then we got some interchangeable colored covers on the outside fog lights so we've got yellow blue and clear for those and also tinted which is a nice little touch instead of just running six spotlights we thought let's run five and a couple of little fog lights so um yeah, so, and then to match the front, we were going to leave the rear end of the car because it didn't look bad. Then when we put the 33-inch tyre on the back of the car, made the whole back of the car look too small. So a quick uh, three days ago plan was to make a rear bar and to match the front bar and look the same. So we did that. We, uh, we put a reversing light in the middle, steady light. We just fabricated a bar up, wrapped to coated it at the front, same as the front, made it a little bit chunkier looking, and uh, gives it that match to the front of the car. So really, really happy with that, how that turned out. And one of my coolest features I love um, is the GME two-way radio, UHF radio we needed, but it's all hidden, it's all up under the dash, the assembly's up under the dash, the handpiece is up under the dash. So it gives us a clean look inside the car, but most importantly at the back of the car, having that solid mount aerial, aerial it's detachable we made a fab the little bracket but to me it just screams radio controlled car when you see the thing driving down the road it's just like a toy radio controlled car which is the look we wanted um we've got the option to put the two and a half meter aerial on which we might do when we uh, hit the sand dunes um up in queensland or right here on the beach in newcastle so the inside of the land cruiser um we wanted to keep it relatively stock but on a stock FJ40, the fuel tank's mounted under the seat, which lifts the seat and makes it very hard for a larger person, tall person to drive. So we had to do a few little modifications. A couple that we did is move the fuel tank. We got rid of the factory fuel tank and we put a fuel cell in the rear of the, of the FJ. And then we lowered, we made a custom mount to lower the seats. We ran some custom seats, picked the embroidery color. We wanted to pick a color that um, highlighted the bronze in the KMC wheels and also the sandy traditional Land Cruiser colour that the car's painted in. So I think the, the boys at Trim Effects nailed that for us. Uh, they got them done. And so the seats have been lowered. Steering column's been raised a little bit to get it away from your knees. And most importantly, for anyone that drives an early model Land Cruiser, the pedals are really wide apart and you struggle to get your foot when you're off the clutch down next to it to stretch your leg out and have a bit of a rest. So uh, we, we modified the pedal assembly to get all the pedals a little bit closer together. And uh, that gives you a lot more leg room in the, in the car. So it's just little touches inside the car that uh, makes it a lot more drivable, but also keeps the original look of the FJ40. So where is the Land Cruiser gonna be throughout 2023? Well, it's gonna travel with the Repco fleet. Um, it's gonna be at the supercar rounds that we appear at. 
Uh, it's going to Motorex in Melbourne. Uh, definitely be there. And going to be at Bathurst, Gold Coast, going to be down in Adelaide for the final round of supercars. We're going to get it out. And if you're around the Gold Coast, we're going to drive it. It was built to drive. It's a it's a fun car, especially coming up to winter in the Gold Coast. Uh, it'll be awesome just to cruise around uh, with the great weather up there, not being too hot without a roof. So we're going to take it everywhere the Repco fleet goes. It's it, I think it's going to become one of the star tracks and attractions of the fleet. Just being something different, it seems to appeal to everyone. So we're super pumped. So anywhere the Repco fleet is, the old FJ33 is going to be along for the ride.